Nicole Franklin, if you've ever met her, her and her husband, Sean, have been going live in, is it Quarantina? Club Quarantina. Yeah. Club? Where we reside. <laughs> oh my gosh. It has been so much fun. And Nicole, the reason why I asked you to become a special guest, not only because I follow you and love your career path and, and all of that. And I, I truly believe that you deserve to be spotlighted, but right now in a time where we're all feeling this pressure, you and Sean have really made light of it and just thought, you know what, there's nothing we can do about it. Let's enjoy it. And I, it's been fun to be a part of. So thank you. Oh, thank you so much. We've, uh, we've, I got the other, thank the you. other part here. There you go. Ah, hello. We do what we can. We do what we can. <laughs> Cheers. <laughs> Cheers to that. <laughs> got the big cup. Not messing around. <laughs> so is your house always this fun, I'm assuming, or is it just in light of the scenario that you guys actually have time together like this? No, honestly, this is pretty standard. Yeah. <laughs> We it's, crack each other up on a regular. On a regular. Yeah. We just, uh, <laughs> we typically don't put most of it on the internet because we come off looking pretty bad. Usually. <laughs> We're always weirdos. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> we, we come off not looking so great, so graceful, any of that. But um, we've cracked up, honestly. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, you've cracked me up. So thank you for going live. And truthfully, I think the Sean and Nicole show needs to continue on past this. And I think you guys would have a huge following your own YouTube channel, The Whole Works. <laughs> I think that would be awesome. Sometimes somebody is not really up for going live for some reason. I don't hmm. know. I don't know why. <laughs> Give them a little bit more spirits and we'll yeah. see if that oh, yeah. changes. <laughs> I'm going to find us quickly on Facebook and now we can say hello to everybody. Hello. Hello. Yes. Kimberly says she always has stories. <laughs> I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing. <laughs> it's a wonderful <laughs> thing. And so before we get into all the fun of what we're doing today and all of that, I really think, Nicole, that you deserve big time to be spotlighted. And Thanks. so those of everybody that doesn't know a little bit of who you are and what you do every day, can you kind of go back in time and tell us what got you to be a part of our beauty industry? Um, absolutely. Um, actually, funnily enough, it kind of um, indirectly started with my dad. Um, my dad was... Um, geez, literally almost 50 when I was born. So we had a huge generation gap there. Um, so when I was growing up, I was only allowed to wear shades of nail color in reds and pinks. That was it because he thought those were the only really socially acceptable ladylike appropriate colors, um, which is really limiting, um, especially <laughs> when red and pink are really not your colors. Um, I'm much more of a black and deep purple kind of girl if you can't tell <laughs> um so I had like a little kind of secret stash of fun nail polish colors and I would take them to you know little friends houses and stuff we'd have slumber parties and I would do everyone's nails and I would do like little flowers and little stripes just using kind of the most basic of nail art tools that I had you know as a nine-year-old you got bobby pins and toothpicks you don't have a lot but you do what you can um and so my mom finally in she's high school the start of high school lobbied for me to be able to actually branch out with my nail polish colors. And it, it was funny, you know, fast forward 20 years down the road and my dad would be, you know, looking through some nail photos. He's like, Oh, these are so pretty. And you hear my mom in the kitchen, like you stifled her creatively for years, you know? <laughs> <laughs> so it kind of started with, uh, with him and I had gotten so used to doing designs on other people that once I got to do things on myself, it was like no holds barred at that point. And it started off as a little game online with me and a couple of girlfriends and we would do our nails and take pictures of them and post them up. And I was always like, nail polish wars. And they kept telling me like, you need to put some of these designs online. You should start a tutorial site. And I was like, that's really weird. Who would do that? <laughs> I kind of thought, I was like, who would want to read a blog like that? But apparently people <laughs> did. Um, it just, uh, timing happened and I had our youngest son. And at the exact same time, um, my mother-in-law was diagnosed with, with stage three ovarian cancer. Wow. And so we made the decision to move her in with us to take care of her. And she was already taking care of her mother with lung disease. So we had both of them. So I stayed home for, gosh several years 
um, just kind of taking care of our kids, taking care of my, you know, my mother-in-law and my, my grandmother-in-law and, and some other members of my, my husband's family, um, unfortunately, whom we've lost all of. So I'm glad I was able to be home to kind of take care of them during their final years and let them be around the kids more. But it left me, um, I had this little window of time where everybody took a nap at the same time during the day. And so I, I would sit down in my little office and start doing my nails. And I started doing pictures and put it online and it just kind of really crescendoed from there. So it was a few years into doing that, that one of the, uh, the companies I was um, doing swatching new collection swatching for asked if I would like to tour a school that they were affiliated with to see about getting my license. And I love the school. I love the instructors. And two days later, I was in class for my license. It was amazing. Oh, my goodness. What a blessing that your <laughs> friend kind of pushed you into there. And I was absolutely. Oh, I owe them so much for that. Absolutely. Yeah. Oh, I love it. You know, it's interesting, too, that your dad only let you use pink or red, because if you go way, way, way back, if you were red, it meant that you were a little um, a little bit of a Jezebel. Yeah. yeah and I so um, over the years, it was interesting that red became a, a color of power and that only royalty could wear red. And then it turned into, you know, other colors. And so I always find it interesting, the history of everything like that and how your dad even played into all of that as well. Oh, so yeah. I'm glad your mom lobbied for you and said, hey, <laughs> there's other colors to this rainbow. <laughs> it was years of pleading. Like I was always so worried whenever, you know, they, they come and clean your room. They're not clean and they're doing a sweep when you're a kid. I was just, you know, find anything else. Just please don't find my nail polish. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. I love it. And you know, isn't it true that naturally we become these caregivers in this industry um, and it goes hand in hand. Like it, if you look at other people's likes of what they wanted to do for a career or whatever, caregiving has always been there, that nurturing side. And so you're a perfect example of that as well. Yeah. Dana Lynn's on here. She said, I was allowed to wear sheer pink on my nails as a child. Wow. At least you got to wear some color, yeah. right? A little bit of, <laughs> I had some pigment going on. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And so eventually you even become an instructor or an educator and started sharing some of that knowledge with other techs. So how did that begin? Uh, that actually um, owed to another. Uh, that would be a push from uh, Ms. Kimberly Jones. Ah, Kim, yes. My partner in crime. So mm -hmm. she, um, she lights the proverbial fire under me more so than anybody else. <laughs> and she's figured out how to manipulate me too. <laughs> I'm going to use the word manipulate because it's absolutely what it is. And I know it's, I know it's happening and I, I allow it to happen. I'm very competitive. I don't know why. And it's like for the silliest of things, no one will play Monopoly with me anymore. Like <laughs> I flipped a table twice. It's not, not my fault. <laughs> things happen. But, um, but all she has to do is make it like a competitive edge. And all of a sudden, like, there I go. And I know it's happening. And I can do nothing to stop it. <laughs> Call it a puppet on a string. I don't really know. <laughs> I love it. Well, I think we all have somebody like that that sees our potential and knows where it should be. And yeah. that it takes them to kind of push us out of, oh, yeah. out of our comfort zone. Because growing is getting out of your comfort zone, period. You yeah. know, like too close to our own project we're way too yeah. close they they see down the road we see right here <laughs> yeah and comfort zones are kind of fun to be in but at some point yeah. in time when people are constantly saying do you know that this is a strength you have and even if it's a competitive edge now I'm not competitive I do try to always improve myself like I'm very competitive with myself mm -hmm. but against other people I just I don't have that I wish I did though <laughs> I'll teach you <laughs> yeah I remember we played spoons. Have you ever played spoons? No. What is spoons? You know, I kind of don't remember. I think it's a card game. But anyway, there's some spoons in the middle. And when something happens, you have to reach for these spoons. And there's always one spoon short of the amount of people that's there. So, like, you dive for these <laughs> spoons. And it is a contact sport game. I've played it twice, but the second time we actually broke the table. And this was a very large, nice wooden table oh, no. because my girlfriend Tony like slam dunked to get her spoons <laughs> and everything went flying. And 
let me tell you, at that moment, I was glad it wasn't my table and wasn't my house. But yeah. there was a feeling that came with that, that I thought I've never been that kind of competitive that I'm like, I want that spoon. I'm going to do whatever it takes. But That's I wish I did fun. have that drive in a way, too. So it can be dangerous, but it'll be fun. Oh, yeah. It sounds like we need to play that at nail camp one year. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> yeah. Everybody bring a spoon. <laughs> Oh my goodness. Hello, everybody. So today's a Tech Talk Live, but it's also kind of what I call pop-up live. We're just winging it. So we're going to spotlight Nicole and really honestly applaud her for what she's done in our industry. But one of the things that Nicole has is this this extraordinary spirit about her that makes you laugh. Your laugh is contagious. Your smile is contagious. Your knowledge is impeccable. And so honestly, guys, we're just here to entertain. Well, okay, I'm here to host <laughs> Nicole to entertain you. Oh, yeah. So I'm if good. you have questions, we'll answer questions. Um, before we get too far into this, so uh, Nicole and I have both chosen um, to not use this as a caffeinated life, more like a, um, a spiritual life. <laughs> And so I know I have Mike's hard black cherry or blackberry lemonade. What are you drinking today? I have my butter pecan moonshine. Oh, you had that the other day. I, I'm not, a, I'm not, a, I'm not a drinker, but this stuff. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Makes you want to do karaoke? A little bit. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Never done karaoke. It did make my mom burst into song in the middle of a moonshine distillery in Gatlinburg, though. So, you know. Hey, it has power. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> so hopefully you guys are able to go grab a drink and just sit and uh, kind of BS with us. I Before we get too far, there was a couple things of business that is good for us techs that have just happened during this week. And despite of, you know, everything that's going on. Um, so one, the president did sign the stimulus. So it looks like within the next three weeks, we don't, we should all as adults that have paid in our taxes properly should be receiving, I believe $1,200 per adult, $500 per child. Exactly. Um, so another thing that happened is SBA loans um, came available, which we've not always been eligible for. And to give you an example, Amanda shared the other day, she did an $18,000 SBA loan at 3.75%. She does not have to pay any payments for an entire year. And when she does, her payments are $88 a month. So kind of keep that in the back pocket as an option. The other great thing that just got released is PBA, which is our um, Professional Beauty Association, has um, opened up to allow grants of $500 to licensed nail techs. Um, I went on there just to see what it was about. I actually ended up joining. So at the time that I should be saving money, I actually spent $50 for an annual membership because I loved the vision that they had. To be honest with you, they've been around for many, many years and I kind of forgot about them. So I'm going to be active with them again. And I've actually invited them to come on Tech Talk Live and be able to share a little bit more about what they do. And with that, it was an easy application that you can fill out and submit. It doesn't ask for financials or anything like that, but you do need your salon license to prove that you are a licensed tech. There was a little bit of questions to answer and it's kind of a lottery system. So they go through people who have submitted and I'm just kind of pick random people and it's a $500 where you don't have to pay back grant available for you. So know that there are some options out there for us. I've also talked about side hustles and what you could do um, to help. Like for instance, distributors have been contacting me after I did a live one day about side hustles. And they're like, are you serious that you'd be willing to do that? And I'm like, yeah, that's kind of what I already do. Mm -hmm. And so if you <laughs> have product that is distributor already has, and you know about that product, go live sharing it, somehow get a promo code from the distributor. When somebody orders that product using that promo code, you get some sort of a kickback and they get some sales and a reach further than what they can do. So it's a win for the distributor and the manufacturer, as well as a win for you. A little bit of a side fun hustle of just sharing your knowledge out there and helping each other. So, and you can do that with local businesses more than, you know, even in outside of the beauty industry. So kind of fun options. I think I should, um, 
you know, get a hold of Mike's hard lemonade and, you know, advertise for them. Old Smoky Moonshine. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but, so did you guys make that moonshine or is that something that um, you can go purchase? Oh, it is straight out of the jar. You can go purchase it. <laughs> they have uh, a, a huge array of flavors. I can't, because I'm not a drinker, so I can't handle the clear ones. Like anyone that you can see through, game <laughs> over for me. But the the creamy ones that effectively look like Yoohoo for grownups, that's, that's kind of where I live. <laughs> I love it. So where you live, like we have drive up liquor stores. And one of the advantages is they 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 lifted like this ban and the liquor stores can deliver to your home right now. Stop it. No joke. Wow. <laughs> yeah. So I don't know how there probably won't be a lot of drinking and driving right now, but there, however, might be a lot of us doing um, lives a little intoxicated doing karaoke. A little bit. Yeah. <laughs> the only thing we had... Um... We've had all of our, because they've, they've closed down all of the dine-in portions of our restaurants, naturally. So they've allowed um, to-go orders for your alcoholic beverages. Oh. So at least, you know, that's, yours is better though. That's better. <laughs> yeah. Well, where I live, however, is a very small town. However, I did realize, I thought we just had the two bars. I forgot that our Sinclair gas station has an alcohol area too. So in our town of 600, that is spread very far out where we don't even get mail to our house. We only have a PO box uh, oh. type of place. It's not even open on weekends, but we have oh three God. places to go get alcohol. <laughs> it's a happy town. Those are essential employees. <laughs> <laughs> I know my next job, right? I'm going to be the delivery. <laughs> um, Deb wants to know more about your butter pecan. What? My butter pecan moonshine. Moonshine. Old Smoky Mountain Distillery. <laughs> they have them at a lot of, like, we have the butter pecan one at our little local package store. They have them at a lot of different places. They do, like, a butter pecan a dark chocolate. They do a, a, like a seasonal kind of an eggnog one that's to die for. They do like an island coconut. There's a bunch of them. <laughs> Orange. Oh my God. There's a lot of them in like the creamy version. It's really I've, good. <laughs> I've had some homemade ones that I'm like you, like there's no way. It's like turd. No, no. Fine. Yeah, I can't. Mm -mm, I can't. If you've got like some guy with a bathtub and a big spatula, and he's like, get yourself some. No. <laughs> <laughs> South, I've seen it happen. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my gosh. I think it was it you guys, too, that, like, that lion guy, tiger guy, or yeah. whatever. On <laughs> was it you guys that put a drinking game to it? No, no. That was Miss, uh, Miss Melody, I think, who did that. <laughs> Although I was not above, well, I was a little above trying it because I looked, I was like, after 30 seconds, you'll have to call like an ambulance. <laughs> but the, the Tiger King memes, if you have not watched Tiger King on Netflix yet, give it a shot because all of a sudden everything around you will seem amazing by comparison. That's, you know what? It's not that bad right now. Everything's kind of okay because I'm not on this show. <laughs> Well, somebody put a drinking game to it. And honestly, because of the drinking game and reading through that, I was avoiding watching this. I'm like, I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to do it. I kind of want to. And then I found out he was from Wyoming. And I thought that doesn't surprise me because some of our <laughs> finest people that make TV have been from Wyoming. And now I'm like, yeah, I don't know what part of Wyoming. I have not really seen them. I live in Wyoming. I was born here. I have all my teeth. <laughs> I wear my clothes. <laughs> I'm not an alcoholic, <laughs> but it seems like they always get the show. <laughs> yeah, that's it. You know what? It makes for good TV. And I think it makes for good TV because you can sit down and go, okay, my life is not as much of a dumpster fire as I originally thought. I'm doing okay. <laughs> so true. Oh my gosh. I love it. Um, oh, I have to put my glasses on. That little bit that I've already had of Mike's has already made my vision go. <laughs> <laughs> Blackberry. <laughs> oh, Bianca said, oh, she thought you were drinking horchata, so the moonshine's a whole lot better than that. Wait, Kimberly says she has a video of you singing. 
dude, why? There's a high <laughs> price. And there's too far, Cam, too far. <laughs> Um, Paula wants to know, other than the fabulous crown, what has been your favorite piece that you've created? Oh, goodness. I do love that crown. I'm not going to lie. I love that crown. Um, geez. It's almost like that, you know, quite, you ask people like, what do you do for fun? And all of a sudden you have no idea what you do for fun anymore. Yeah. Um, my favorite would probably be um, the flat art piece I did um, for Nolympian Argentina. Um, it's kind of like a, I'll drop a picture in the comments. It's kind of um, like a purple toned landscape scene. Uh, I like it so much because it just... It was, it was honestly a lot of fun to do. I'm, I'm huge on dark colors. So it was just kind of fun to incorporate all the dark colors that I used and have that to create my, you know, background, midground, foreground to kind of layer everything. And it was just really calming to do, honestly. Um, it was a lot of, you know, a lot of detail, a lot of fine lines, and I live for detail and fine lines. Oh, I love it. I watched your live the other day where you were doing... <laughs> oh my gosh, talk about so many fine lines. And if ever if anybody ever wants to practice their fine lines, what Nicole shared the other day is just a good technique of having to brush them this way, brush them this way, this oh, yeah. way, to be able to use all angles and come out with the most beautiful design. Thank you. Mm -hmm. I love the lines. It was them for the longest time because they were so tricky and now I can't stay away from them. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Isn't that so true? Once you get it, it's yeah. almost like that aha moment that yes. you're like, oh my gosh, I was just pushing too heavy or I didn't have the right brush. My brush was too large or I didn't have like a gel paint or a gel polish. That was a perfect mixture to do it. And so once you get that right combination, like you said, you're just unstoppable. You can't, it becomes part of who you are. You, you are comfortable with outlining. You're comfortable with the extra design and the delicate and the finesse that those fine lines can add to any nail art is phenomenal. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. A little goes such a long way with that. Such yeah. Oh my gosh. So um, I'm pretty sure that we're turning some people into some alcoholics with that. Butter <laughs> <laughs> um, Kimberly said it actually tastes great in coffee as well. And it's kind of funny because I told, I told Nicole, I said, you know, I'm still in coffee mode here. So I just warmed up <laughs> another coffee, but then I had this. So I was like kind of double fist and I go a caffeinated um, spirit. Good combination, right? It's a balance. The, it's a, it's a <laughs> Oh my gosh. Or Paula says, Hey, that tub juice, it's the best. <laughs> Paula's from the South too. Paula knows. Oh my God. <laughs> I can remember, was it purple passion and Everclear and gosh. jumble juices and all those things from the nineties that we used uh -huh. to get into. Whew. Hiding in the woods with a bottle of Boone's farm. <laughs> <laughs> hey, don't knock the Boone's farm. <laughs> All had our I still before. walk out with it not in the bag. I'm proud to show it. <laughs> Complete with flutes. <laughs> oh my gosh, the sugar content and some of that oh, stuff. Oh, right. Yeah, that was an instant headache. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Christian's on here and she said, Nicole with a whole bunch of hearts. Love seeing you still in the nail world. It makes me miss out Instagram nail community and indie, indie days. Oh, I do. Okay. I love, I love my indie lines so much. Special place in my heart forever are the indie polish makers. They work their tails off with some lacquer and more glitter than I get into on a weekly basis. Oh, wow. Goodness gracious. And they do it just out of the, the love of all things nail related. And that's just I, super admirable to me. And they're so creative. Oh my goodness. So creative. I love seeing mm -hmm. all their different finishes and looks with the techniques. It's just, it's awesome to see. Yeah. And you know, so earlier I was live in Masters Mindset Monday and I talked about like my phone keeps telling me that I need to update it. Like do it. <laughs> And I keep hitting that remind me later button, remind yeah. me later. And truthfully, what it is, is I need to ch change it to Wi-Fi, which is a click of a button, right? And then once you're on Wi-Fi, it up, like, uploads 
and then it turns your phone off and then restarts it and then your phone looks different. It's changed. So sometimes you don't want change. So you're like, eh, remind me later. Yeah. I don't really have the time for this. Remind me later. So I was like, what if our life was that way? How many of us have decided not to do the gradual little updates and uploads and get new education to keep us going that we're still stuck way over here and we're feeling sluggish and we're about ready to crash and we're not, you know, feeling spunky about it and stuff like that. We've lost our mojo per se. Yeah. And now we want to go from here to here and we can't because I don't understand it. I have to invest in this. What if you set your budget to slowly upgrade yourself, reset, disconnect, learn a technique, specialize in it, get true knowledge from the company, put yourself up on the next level and then do it again, redo it again and get yourself up to where you're always like, wow, I got this. I get this. I understand that. I know how to break that down. And so my live today was like, do not allow yourself to get the virus like a Wi-Fi virus and do not remind me later, do it now. And take your phone, connect to the Wi-Fi, let it update, let yourself update, grow. And yeah, it's going to be different and it's not going to be easy. But once you accept that challenge and you get into that next level, there's no stopping you on the level that you can take your career to. Exactly. Yes. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Classes are vital. Oh my goodness. We have, I mean, especially, especially in the world of nails, our our game changes constantly. We have, you know, technology keeps jumping on products and, and different ways of using things. I mean, we just keep getting these jumps to get us from, you know, A to B more efficiently or, you know, sleeker. It's just by not staying up on as much as you can. I mean, you not only kind of do a disservice to, to your clients, but you're really, you're doing a disservice to yourself. I mean, why wouldn't you want the elevate yourself as much as you possibly can and then kind of spread that to others as well. I mean, Mm -hmm. don't sell yourself short. You (laughs) don't limit yourself to the red and the pink. Don't complicate. (laughs) (laughs) And so when this happened and did you voluntarily shut your place or were you kind of forced like the rest of us? Voluntarily. What now? I'm sorry. You broke up. Um, I'm sorry. Shut down your, um, your salon. uh, initially we voluntarily shut down. Um, and then I think my, who, who, anybody else just not really aware of what day it is much anymore right here. Yeah. 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 Um, so we voluntarily shut down and then, uh, within several days, um, because we've not, the state has not issued a shelter in place. They're kind of going, um, city by city. So the city um, of Buford, Georgia, where the Nail Society is, they actually did issue a shelter in place. Um, The date we have to return right now, I believe, is April the 13th. But they did say that that date could be um, altered or rescinded. So really hoping for rescinded. Um, But we just, it's hard to do. It's hard for all the commissioner had that decision made for us. But I mean... We have so many, so many clients we come in contact with every two weeks at a, at a minimum every two weeks. And so many of them are in, you know, that, that higher risk age bracket. So many of them are receiving cancer treatment, dialysis, all manner of things. They have autoimmunes and we're in such close contact with them that you, you have to know and have to see that it really is, it's about the greater good. It's about everyone, not just ourselves, not just our income. It's about everyone. I always, I always say it's about the success of all, not the success of one. And this is just a much grander scale than I have ever really described it as, but that's truthfully what it is. I mean, I, there, there are some, everybody has those days where they wake up and they're just like, you know what? I'm just not up for it today. And you kind of drag yourself in some days you just don't have that, that hitch in your giddy up. And I don't, know that I'll ever feel that way again because I have never missed work so much in my life. I miss my clients. I miss their stories and their little, their quirks and their, you know, their dramas. And I miss everything. I miss the the girls at the shop. I miss my work wife, Kim. I miss my Emily. I know. It's, just, it's so strange. You're, mm-hmm. I mean, and so many of us, we, we cling to our routine and that's just, and you don't really realize that you do 
until it's taken away from you. And then, I mean, there, and I experienced this for several days. I mean, I just kept saying I'm lost. And that's just, that's really how I felt. I said, I feel lost. I feel like I can't find my purpose. I just, I couldn't get my bearings. I couldn't. And I, I literally just said, that's enough shut up. And I went and I took a shower and I did my hair and I put on makeup. My husband's like, where are you going? I'm like, to the mirror. <laughs> <laughs> and I kind of gave myself a little, not really a pep talk. I more kind of yelled at myself really and kind of played the whole, let's count our blessings thing. You big hmm. old sissy, you know? Oh, it's, I it's, completely it's, agree. It's been hard for a lot of us to wrap our, our minds around and just don't let it, don't let it get you. It, I mean, cause it, who it can, it can yeah. just don't let it pull you down. Um, my, honestly, where did my phone go? My, my favorite, uh, quarantine activity has been to go to my Instagram because we have all got one of those massive save folders and, um, you save looks, you save techniques, videos, anything like that. Tons of them tons of them so i mean sit down for you know 30 40 minutes go go look at one of those find something that you know is a technique maybe you haven't tried or you might want to perfect and just take a few minutes if you've got some supplies with you if not do some you know take a couple nails or take just even a small piece of paper and just kind of sketch how you would like designs to do um so much of you know the intricate stuff that we do with you know faces and and butterflies and and kind of more living designs you're going to need to sketch those lines to see the actual ebb and flow of a a lifelike piece and you got to kind of hone those skills so do something like that to make yourself feel normal (laughs) I mean I know it's silly to say but it it helps it massively massively (laughs) has helped it does I I was, I got to talk to my husband last night. He's been on a military base since January and doesn't expect to be home till at least August. So I'm in an empty house. And my daughter who's 20, who's home from college because college is shut down. I do at least have somebody to interact with. But I was thinking the other day, I was like, I'm not ready to be alone, especially in a time like this. Like, and I, I need the people. I said the other day, if you walk past my yard and I'm outside talking to the trees and hugging on the trees, I'm just being one with nature. I've never been an actual tree hugger before, but I'm needing touch. And if I can't touch somebody, I'm going to just <laughs> do what I can. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So I, vol- what happened is I was in Utah. I was teaching a nail class up there. And when I came home, I naturally quarantined myself you know, during that, that travel time. And that's when everything started shutting down. So it was just like, about the time I got home was like, it, it hit the masses. Yeah. And so during that time, then we were shut down and then it extended our shutdown time. And it looks like it's doing it again. And then certain counties around us have done the stay in place shelter kind of thing. So I imagine we're going to hit that. I'm really not expecting that we're going to open till May. And so, yeah. I've, I've tried not to say it and kind of put that out into the, uh, out into the atmosphere. I know. Um, I'm, you know, I think, I think we're all, we're all worried. We all have an air of uncertainty and that's just, you know, no one does well with that. No one does well. So. Oh. But you know what you said a little while ago, there's somebody that's always worse off, you know, and here we were comparing the tiger King. But like me giving this reality of being alone made me realize of the older people who are truly compromised that don't not naturally get out of their house. Look how they might feel or people that are homeless right. or people that don't have some finances or the spouse or can't qualify for the unemployment or can't qualify for some of these grants. What's yeah. going on? And, you know, I don't know anybody in my circle of people to reach out and say, hey, do you need any help? But sometimes these people won't verbalize it. So us communicating with them might be their only chance at hope. And so those of them that have um, have taken this to, you know, the deep depths of their heart and kind of putting them down, it's our job to lift that up as well. And so if you know of anybody that you need to reach out to, definitely now is the time and think Absolutely. we're just in a week or two or sometimes some of us are in a three week of isolation. Mm-hmm. They, they live this. Precisely. Yeah. And so um It opened my mind up a whole lot more that, man, am I fortunate that I am in a beautiful home. I'm safe. I'm, you know, for the most part healthy. And 
it just count those blessings. And yeah, as like Dana Lynn and Anita and Gail, everybody, it's like, there's something the good that's going to come out of this. And we just have to, you know, have to be able to lift each other up for the, for the best. Yeah. Let's see here. Do you guys have any questions for Nicole while she's on here? And let me tell you, Sean is joining us today as well. And these two have, uh, we'll say that they have some tips to be able to entertain us as they entertain each other. <laughs> <laughs> and, and I also want to know, like, what's the first thing? What are you missing? Like, is there something that right now that you're just like, I don't know why, but as soon as I'm able to, I'm going to go get this. Waffle House. <laughs> I've never been to a Waffle House. I need to put it on my list. A little piece of my heart just, just, just cracked. It, oh my girl. I don't even think I've seen a sign for a Waffle House. <laughs> All right. That's it. We got to fix that. Now I know what a Krispy Kreme is. <laughs> wishes it were Waffle House okay <laughs> <laughs> Waffle House is the cure for all things crummy granted it's not going to sit real well with your system probably but it's delicious and it's amazing and it's it is the staple of the south <laughs> so, I don't know why Waffle House is always my go-to answer for something like that like both times after I had both my sons you know my mom is, I mean, like Hallmark commercials level her to just sobbing. So she's sitting there looking at me, you know, her daughter all, all misty eyed and everything. I've just had her grandchildren. And I'm like, Waffle House now. And I make her go get me Waffle House because they won't let you eat while you're in labor, which really not fair. Not know, fair. Right? Okay, you're already doing, you got a lot going on. Maybe a snack, maybe a hamburger. Yeah. So yeah, every time I'm like, Waffle House, baby, you'll be here when you get back. Go. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so if I, well, now I'm going to have to put it on my to-do list. So when I go to a Waffle House, what do I need to order? Uh, I mean, you need hash browns, first of all. Okay. Uh, full code system to order hash browns. So you can get them scattered, smothered, covered, peppered, capped, diced, chunked. Am I forgetting anything? But they're all, they're all little codes on like with cheese, with ham, with onions, with mushrooms, with peppers, with chili, just the list goes on and on of all these things you can have, a, you know, added to your hash browns, pile it to heaven, if you will. Um, people have their, you know, for entrees, you know, country ham, some eggs. Have you, you are okay. you, are, are you aware of country ham? Um, it's ham, bacon. Country ham, country ham is like a, basically like a salt cured ham. Um, okay. Some people fry it. If you want it old fashioned, they'll steam it. So it's, I mean, it's super salty. My whole mouth just filled with saliva. <laughs> <laughs> wow. That's well, it sounds phenomenal. It's really good. It's really good. There is not a damn healthy thing on the menu, but you're leaving happy. <laughs> Wow, that comfort food for sure. So yeah, Waffle House and shopping. Those are as soon as as soon as the the veil gets lifted, I'm hitting the ground running. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness, I'm gonna have to find out where the closest Waffle House is to me. If not, it will be in one of my travels. I'll have to put it on my to do list. I would love that. Yeah, a two a.m. Waffle Run is what somebody put on here. Oh yeah. Oh my goodness. Absolutely. Yeah. The waffles are, I mean, it's waffle house. You got to get a waffle as well. But for me, those hash browns, oh my gosh. <laughs> so good. Oh my goodness. Somebody put on here country ham and biscuits. That sounds so good. Yeah. I've never heard of a waffle house. So. Oh my gosh. That's I know they're like, Amy, what? I know. I know. I've never oh, heard of that. And I've oh, traveled a lot. Wow. Well, that's true. Michelle's on here. And until I went to Atlanta, she goes, until camp, you never even saw an armadillo dead on the side of the road. <laughs> we had like a long drive. And actually, we got lost. So we were like way out. And so it's me, Kirstie, Meekin, Be Becky, Bunnell. 
and Michelle Baker. And um, so we were just having a good old time. And I, I'm looking over on the side of the road. Now I'm used to seeing deer, antelope, you know, an occasional fox or whatever. No, I'm seeing something that I'm like, what is that? Like, it's a weird rock, right? Because the color and stuff. And she's like, Amy, those are armadillos. I'm like, oh, like I wanted to stop and look at it. Like, I know it's roadkill, but I just wanted to like touch it. Is it I, I'm like, is it really hard on the outside? And oh yeah. anyway, so Michelle teased me a lot about, I was truly fascinated on the drive in and the drive out. The other thing that was there that I'd never heard of, and I think there's a reason why I've never heard of it, was those boiled peanuts. Yes, ma'am. Oh, yes. It was like we had to double dog dare each other to try it. And so we stopped at this like beautiful scenery place that Michelle's like, we have to go here. You guys have to experience. And it was, it was breathtaking view and all of that. And inside were these free boiled peanuts. Yes, ma'am. Oh my gosh. Can we associate them with just the beautiful places you get them at since we were little? On so... the side of the road. <laughs> <laughs> On the way to... The cool place. Yeah yeah, 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 yeah. And to know that sometimes people eat the shell and all. Like no, uh, no, no, no. Mm -mm. no. They're not doing it right. Some okay. Mm -hmm. If you do, there are some people. If you do, um, you kind of like lightly boil them, and then they'll fry them, and then sometimes they'll have. Oh, go ahead and eat the shell again. It's not for everybody. Yeah, I don't like it. It's kind of like. What is it kind of like? I don't know. I don't know what I'm likening this to. You can't. It's boiled peanuts. <laughs> Edamame. 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 Well, no, we don't eat the shell in edamame. No, we don't. No, but we don't. You're not mm, supposed so, to. Psh, yeah. <laughs> well, I had to laugh because, so we ended up going to a convenience store and I asked them, because, you know, normally when I walked in the convenience store and there's these big containers of things, it's usually soup, right? I opened it up and I was like, <laughs> what is that? Like, it looks disgusting <laughs> yeah, yeah pretty much and so i don't know becky or katie or somebody was next to me and it was almost like a double dog area well we saw the price and we we're like i'm not paying for this like to just try it and we ended up finding the other place and got it for free and they had different flavors that you could do so i asked the attendant that was there i go i'm not trying to be ignorant or anything like that i've never seen anything like this before can you explain to me why there's even this here and he was just like it's just kind of a thing we do we're known for it blah 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 and you just have to try it and I'm like I just can't right now you know I'm kind of with food and later on when I did try it, it was a good thing that we were kind of isolated alone and not in a public place like that because it was really one of those that didn't look the prettiest it looked like I was throwing up but really I was just trying to spit it out very politely <laughs> maybe you didn't find some good ones I don't know we, we'll, we... We'll, we'll take you our our guy down the well, he's down the road, really. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Did he sell moonshine too? Oh wait, I would not. No, if those are boiled in moonshine. Ooh. Would it? We've got, we've got moonshine pickles yeah. in the fridge upstairs. Yes, yeah. it's a, it's an idea. Believe it is it an or idea. Not. It's probably already out there, and people are like, "Yeah, I've had that for years." Here, I'm thinking I'm innovative. <laughs> I mean, maybe you got to get more deep south than we are because we're pretty deep south. Or maybe Tennessee. I don't know. I think maybe ten oh, yeah, yeah, Tennessee. Yeah. They're probably doing it in Tennessee. Yeah, a little bit. Yeah. A little bit. Kentucky? Mm, possibly. West Virginia? <laughs> Madison <laughs> says <Stanford>. on. <laughs> <laughs> There's okay, the okay. laugh. There's the famous Nicole laugh. <laughs> so did, did y'all rap? What's no, going on? We're on. Oh, okay. You're oh. on. Oh, hi. You're live with the Sean and Nicole show. So I will take the uh, I will take the boiled peanut thing one step further, and I'll be shocked, shocked if you've heard of this. Okay, so if you take a bottle of like a you know twenty ounce bottle of Coca Cola, drink a little bit out of it, and get a little bag of salted peanuts, and you pour said salted peanuts into your Coke. Oh, and yeah. as you drink the Coke, you get some peanuts here and there. And that's also that's a like very a, a southern thing. Extremely yeah. southern. Sounds like a choking hazard to me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now, I've done that with Mentos, but you don't drink it. It, it drinks you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so really, salted peanuts. I, I mean, I like salt with the, the sugar, so I could understand how the flavor would be okay. Everything and the carbonation just kind of. I don't know. It's it, it seems, kicks it up enough. Yeah, it yeah. seems really weird to try. I, I did try it for years, and finally, I, I have no idea as to what made me be like, you know what? I'm I'm good. It was delicious, actually. 
absolutely delicious. So I'm kind of thinking every live that we've done that's been a fun one like this, we've kind of put a challenge out there. That might be the challenge of this live is that you have to prove to us that you're going to put salted peanuts inside your Coke and do a review for King it. No, so really, I mean. That... Nobody asked you. <laughs> <laughs> Good for you. Pay no attention to this man on the side. <laughs> I love it. Madison workout. says I'm them right now is jailhouse workouts just to fight off all these extra carbs mm. and calories. Because I don't have access to a gym anymore, you know? Oh no. Um, yeah. Along with the rest of us, I'm sure, but no home gym. We've got we've got some dumbbells and maybe a couple He was bands. lifting the trash bag last night. <laughs> Well, you know, Nelly shared with us about the mirror workout. Now he uses it more as, as an actual mirror, but apparently you can work out to a mirror. That's the thing I showed you where it's the dude in your mirror and they do the little workout yes, thing. And you yes. were like, you were like, that's ridiculous. La la la, go to the gym. I'm like, oh, well, what? now it would come in handy. <laughs> now, okay? yes, yes. The purchases I wanted to make yeah. that were stupid seem yeah. really smart. Sorry I didn't plan for this. Mm -hmm, yeah. mm -hmm. Isn't it so true? Yeah. So true. They said they COVID-19, but they mean it by the COVID-19 pounds that we're going to gain. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Sadly accurate. Not if I can help it. <laughs> so, yes, yes. <laughs> not, not fat. Yeah, not, nothing to brag about. Yeah. <laughs> Madison says the best Waffle Houses are the dirtiest ones where the cook smokes. And if they don't bring my silverware already in hot water, I don't trust them. <laughs> <laughs> yes. For those Georgia people that don't know, Madison lives south of Atlanta, and we can tell. <laughs> yeah, I'm thinking if I went to a Waffle House, it would automatically put me into those extra pounds as well. <laughs> yes. <laughs> oh my goodness. But it's worth it. Oh, Gail corrected me. I must have said Kirsty when I was meaning Katie. So I do that a lot. <laughs> Easy. They're similar. That's right. Oh my gosh. So Jotana actually has boiled peanuts in her crock pot right now. Like, Beautiful. So do you I season them? <laughs> and it, are you boiled in water? Is it boiled in like, I don't know, apple water. cider vinegar or something? Like a, you like like a broth. A, like a, some of them do like a briny, more mm -hmm. briny broth yeah. or like a Cajun style broth. It kind of just It's depends. salty. It's going to be oh, salty. Oh yeah, it's going to be yeah. salty. Mm -hmm. And delicious. Oh yeah. So I wonder you know, a lot of these places are doing deliveries. I wonder how far they'll do it. I wonder if the guy on the side of the highway down there. <laughs> you, have to, you have to pronounce boiled peanuts correctly. You don't say boiled. You say bold. 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 Bold peanuts. Yeah, it's real quick. Bold. Bold. Bold peanuts. Bold peanuts. Okay. There's my English lesson for yeah. today. <laughs> they'll give you the good ones if you pronounce it yeah, like yeah. that. Otherwise, they, they kind of think you're a spy. <laughs> <laughs> you reminded Paula about the peanuts and Coke. She hasn't had that in forever. And so Paula? I've never had it. So Paula, I think I'm going to have to, well, not right now, but in the future, go to the store and try that out. Nice little comfort treat. It is. Yeah. It is. And you follow it with like a little Debbie or something. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> you know what? <laughs> So Kimberly wants to know about that mirror, which we'll have to ask Nellie, which you guys know that Nellie and I are going to come on again. Oh, yeah. She's like, I wonder, like, in the mirror thing, can they see you, too? Now, supposedly they're not. But, you know, the conspiracy theory people out there think that your Alexas and your phones and, you know, everything that you have, they can see you. Oh, yeah. So what would they see? Honestly, part of me really hopes that it's like a secret reality show. <laughs> <They just <laughs> That you can just like pay to patch in, you know? Yeah. Oh, wow. I would feel like I already, if it's true and all our devices are monitoring us and la la la, I feel so bad for whoever got assigned to me. They're like, she's talking about cats again. <laughs> oh, look, nails, great. Yeah. <clears throat> I'm like, that dude has got to be just bored to tears. And whoever would have to watch you through a mirror be like, he's flexing again. Oh, sweet Lord. <laughs> Oh, yeah, never. No, no. <laughs> and so, um, so Sean, are you also, you know, unemployed like the rest of us right now? Or are you still kind of working? My mind, yes. Yeah. But well, 
we uh we're trying to make it fun for the kids and i've got like this well for good or bad i've got this daddy boot camp going and they're getting stretches and exercises done every day and they love it yeah <laughs> and i don't know we, we we just try to make the the best of the situation you know we're still very blessed we have oh, yeah. food we have everything we need oh yeah so oh yeah there's no reason to yeah not not appreciate what you got yeah it's yeah. easy to forget sometimes it's good it's a good yeah. idea to walk around and count said blessings oh yes because it's i mean it's easy to yeah get down not, be, not be grateful mm, yeah. yeah you gotta even, yeah even during hard times yeah Especially you know and sadly when we think about some of the elderly like I, so I've been in business since 1991 and there was only one other time that I could think of. Well, twice I've been actually shut down. And the, honestly, it wasn't because of recessions or anything like that. I had babies, you know, and I had to like quit doing clientele for a little while, maternity leave and then go back. And then I've moved three times and then I had some health issues. And I thought, you know what, eight times in my career that I can count, I've had to completely shut down, not do clients for longer than a month and then rebuild back up if not longer. Yeah. And so I think about people from the years ago of all the recessions that they've been through and how they've come through it and how it's made them stronger and how it made these mm -hmm. great relationships and friendships and stuff. And once again, counting those blessings, we just have to know that this will pass just like everything does, but it's how Absolutely. we responded to it while we were in it. And um, Absolutely, yeah. <sighs> Yeah. Thank goodness for social media. Cause think they didn't have social media before. <laughs> right. Can you imagine? What oh. would we do without Netflix right now? Oh. Yeah. <laughs> and the tiger King. <laughs> right. exactly. What other are... movies have you guys watched? We needed that so bad right now. <laughs> yeah. Nothing is as bad as that reality. Not the hero yeah. we deserved, but the one we needed. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Not saying that guy's a hero because I don't, I don't think any of them have their hands clean he's on that show. He's the hero of distraction. But for yeah, us, he's, yeah. <laughs> the distraction king. Yes. I it's watched a uh, hundred been... humans. I watched a couple of those episodes the other day. Did you see that at all? No. no. So they take a hundred humans from across the United States and they put them in one room and then there's like all these different scenarios. Um, and they categorize them the age groups of 20s, 30s, 40s, 50s, and 60s, and which one can get through different projects. And it's interesting. One of the things that I learned from watching the show, and I haven't watched every episode, is they were like, are you really at your best in your 20s, 30s, 40s, 50s, or 60s? And the ones that keep winning are the 20s and the 60s. Like, they're parallel to each other. Nice. Wow. So it shows this curve. And then at the end of each uh, study that they do, they bring on a, a doctor that specializes in that field of, like, why did these people succeed while these ones did, didn't? And it was interesting that when you're in your 20s, you feel a little bit fearless. You still haven't been knocked down a few times. So you still have <laughs> confidence inside of you of, like, I got this. I can do that. I can right. do that. And because of that, they're happy. And they can strive through some of the difficult things and challenges that they put them through. When you hit into your 30s, 40s, and 50s, you have children, you have other outside things. Maybe now you've experienced like some deaths or some illness or something. And they, they call this curve that goes down. And when you're in your 60s, you finally just accepted everything you've gone to and you're back into being happy and just loving life. And so it's interesting, this entire show, every scenario they put them through, the 20 year olds and the six year olds just have it going on. And I'm like, you know what? I've always felt like I was an old soul and I'm 47. So I'm starting to, according to them, I'm going back up, you know, into the <laughs> happiness. And it's so true. I finally am comfortable in my skin. I'm finally comfortable with the knowledge that I have that I don't have to know everything and it's okay. And yeah. connecting to the right people and not having to be, you know, so competitive to like fight, 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 fight anymore. I'm back right. into just being comfortable. And man, that show, even though some of the scenarios are hilarious, <laughs> uh, very funny. There's, yeah. it's interesting to see how they created this curve of, of that in its twenties and sixties. So I don't know. It's kind of interesting. We'll have to check that out. Yeah, absolutely. Oh my goodness. Now more was on here and she said she would pay <laughs> a uh, penny to watch uh nelly work out and uh tagged you in it nicole so just a little heads up 
<laughs> oh, oh Nelly's here. <laughs> <laughs> we can't talk about Nelly anymore in his workout mirror. So Nelly, apparently you have a side hustle. <laughs> <laughs> gotta do what you gotta do. <laughs> really? Oh my goodness. Oh my gosh, Michelle, I agree with you. Sean is very entertaining with his Facebook post. So yeah. Yeah, on Facebook. Feel like the live version is oh gosh, y'all. It's the best <laughs> therapy I know how to broadcast. Let's just put it that way. It has been a long nine hundred and seventy-three or however many it's been days with him. Yeah. <laughs> All day. I was just saying I wouldn't no be, breaks. <laughs> I wouldn't rather be quarantined with anybody but you. Yes, that and is that, and then you gotta go and say that. That is <laughs> adorable. And I mean I would want to be quarantined with me too, because <laughs> let's be real. <laughs> Like, I'm always right. I'm really mm. funny. I'm kind of awesome. I mean, the list goes on. Yeah. You know, modest, modest, yeah. humble, yeah. all of these things. Always approachable. Yeah. <laughs> well, since I'm not currently connected to Amazon Prime or Netflix, and I'm a hopeless romantic and I'm all alone. How did you two meet? Tell us your love story. Be my lifetime original Hallmark show. Um, well. <laughs> um, or, or do we need to put a rating on this and warn people in advance? A way where I don't come off bad in this story. Ah, here we go. Um, so we actually met at uh, a mutual friend's house. They'd had kind of like a little dinner party-ish, kind of mm. very, very small thing, if you will. And Sean and I were two of the guests, and he was in attendance with his then girlfriend. Um, which did not last super long after yeah it was rocky at that point. it was well, yeah it yeah. was it was not they were not in a not yeah. a great relationship that i i i did not wreck of you know anything like that no no um they were not together too terribly long after that but we actually lost touch for what was it like a year or more yeah a year yeah. or more um following that and um i had kind of moved up and down the east coast a little bit just you know tra la la and uh, when I got back, you actually messaged me like two days later after I'd gotten back. He's like, hey, I heard a little birdie said you were back in Georgia. And um, and then we discovered that we were, A, both living in the same state again, and B, both not seeing each other again. And then, which I'm like, finally! And then somebody's like, <laughs> the stars aligned, you yeah. know, I'm just at a point in my life where <sighs> I just really feel like I need some good friends. And I'm like, you have got to be kidding me. <laughs> And of course I do that. I was like, oh my gosh, no, I totally understand. Meanwhile, like the claws come out. It, two, two dates, I think you made it. And yeah. That was Not just, long. we were, we were a full date blown a relationship. Yeah. It was, it was internet official. <laughs> Because you're on not, MySpace you're not nothing if you're not on MySpace. MySpace. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, just you know, at least we didn't meet on the you know Tinder or anything like that. <laughs> well, and if you did, you know that you swiped to the one way versus the other, right? Well, I have known some adorable couples that met on Tinder, and actually, my favorite one was a client of mine, and um, he and his fiance, or well, wife now, met on Tinder. And she's from um, very traditional background. And so unbeknownst to everybody, he had their wedding bands engraved with love at first swipe. And oh, his yeah. mother-in-law did not find that funny in the slightest. Yeah. <laughs> I howled when I heard that. Like I was on the floor. I was like, that's clever. He's like, they still talk about it at dinner. <laughs> oh my goodness. So what's the secret to keeping the laughter alive like this? Knowing how to insult somebody without it being too hurtful. <laughs> hey, you know what? There's a lot of truth to that. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. No, yeah. We're, we're a lot of people all the time are just, you know, they'll kind of see us interact and they're like, are you guys arguing? I'm like, no, no, this is how we talk. Yeah, you know? it's a constant ban banter. Back yeah, I mean, forth. it really is. Yeah, um, it's just just tete a tete all the time all yeah. the time like we kind of have to okay real talk you know when we actually need to discuss something serious because yeah. we really don't know when we need to take the other one seriously because it's very rare that that even happens 
But she's my best friend. Oh, yeah. She is. Oh, yeah. That we, we that. love doing things together. Um, and we just have fun. Yeah. We have fun together. So. Can't take yourself too seriously. No. Yep. Yeah. No. Aw, I wish my Brandon was here. You're making Aww. me miss him even more. But so, like you guys, we were kind of set up. And then a year later, it was just like, eh, I don't know. And then. <laughs> Honestly, it was just one of those times and it was um it was actually Super Bowl Sunday and he was on duty and where we were having the Super Bowl party and my husband's a cop, they all came in to eat because <laughs> you know that's what they're known for. <laughs> so they they always know the good parties to stop and get food and I was there and um a local or a mutual friend of ours decided like we really needed to to date. This shouldn't just be these occasional times that we meet up. And um, so they asked me if he could have my phone number and I said yes. And he didn't call and he didn't call and he didn't call and he didn't call. A couple weeks went by and I was just like, screw this. Like I'm tired of like always waiting on somebody. Well, here's what happened. So Super Bowl Sunday, a couple of weeks later is Valentine's Day. He didn't want to call and have a date like the week of Valentine's Day. <laughs> <laughs> that I didn't, I didn't even know how to deal with that. So we waited a week after Valentine's Day. So we like timed it because he didn't want like the love mushy stuff to like interfere. Yeah. And we've been inseparable ever since. And we laugh and we joke and we have like, I think the secret to that is like, there's things that happen at home that nobody else would know. And so you become, you get your own language, you get your own things that, you know, you can throw at each other. Like my husband calls me Poopa Loompa. And seriously, I've had to embrace it because it's like my mission <laughs> from him. But it started with Jennifer Aniston on that movie, Just Go With It. And she's in a purple dress and an elevator. And the, the other guy, I forget whatever his name is. Um, she's like, come on, you know what? And he's like, oh, my little Oompa Loompa, because she's tan <laughs> and in a purple dress. Well, my husband, of course, takes it one step further and adds the P in front of it for some reason. There's no story behind that. And I'm his little Poopa Loompa. <laughs> and so I've had to embrace it because it keeps coming at me. I told him, like, I really don't like that name. But you know what? Over time, it's the the little language that you create with each other and the little fun with it and to not take it personally. I know he loves me very much. And you know what? There is nobody else out there with a nickname like mine. <laughs> That's adorable. We the dogs at the door. Yes, Thank you. <laughs> Oh my goodness. So funny. Um, Nelly says, that, oh gosh, I, maybe I shouldn't read this out loud, but I'm going to, at least if you met somebody on Tinder, he wouldn't, he would have to be gone by morning. <laughs> <laughs> and then Nelly says, is this a Dr. Phil show or tech talk? <laughs> this is our new version of tech talk. Here. So then I was like nails. <laughs> <laughs> Morgan says she's kind of nauseated right now listening to your story. And the Madison says, oh, what a story. Bravo. Now that's a story that didn't tell that you didn't tell the judge. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my gosh. I love it. Anita's on here. Hi, Anita. You said, oh, my God. Fisa has the nickname. You got Fisa has Poopa Loompa. Is that nickname? I had, I mean, it was truly made up from my husband. So. <laughs> And then Michelle, until now, Amy, we all know. I know, right? So, you know, isn't it so true? Like the little things that matter and become the biggest things and in the hardest of times. And we've talked like five love languages and I'm a touch person. My husband can walk up to me and he gives me those big barrel hugs and just yeah. holds on for a second. And boy, it can just, it just takes every care away and lets me know I'm gonna be okay. And so Absolutely. um Somewhere along the way, you guys must fulfill each other's love tank out of the five love languages and continue on. So it's fun to see couples like you. And thank you for allowing him to come on screen. With of course. <laughs> He's a hoot. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my gosh. Love it. Love it. So, Nicole, what's next for you? What's on your to do list that you want to accomplish um, professionally and um, profession professionally and personally? So. Oh. Do I even have personal goals? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Everything's nails. Honestly, it's so weird. Um, so professionally, um, I'm actually going to be, um, my goal is to kind of have, um, well, 
was supposed to be. <laughs> we modify. We modify our goals with the plans that we're in now. Um, but I'd like to start doing some more um, quarterly classes, um, kind of, you know, one-on-one -on -one classes, um, smaller group classes at the Home Salon, the Nail Society. Uh, I'd like to start getting into more of the online classes as well. Mm -hmm. um, that's definitely a next big one on my list, especially with where we're at now. It's kind of time to kick that into some high gear. Um, I can help you out with that, you know. I would love that because there's a whole lot of tech elements I'm not really savvy with. And I would ask my oldest kid, but I kind of think he lies to me about the answers. <laughs> I can't prove it. He's like, you're just not doing it right. I just... I. It's kind of one of those things like I'll show her, you know, <laughs> like, and all of a sudden you don't know why you're on the solitaire app, but he's like, oh yeah, that's how you do it. <laughs> no, it's not, <laughs> you know? Um, so that's a big one. I just think education is so, so important. Um, I mean, art has always been just my one true love as far as nails go. Yeah. Um, but, you know, just the really taking a step back, going back to some fundamental basic classes and things, just... Everybody needs refresher courses. That's why we have the phrase refresher courses, you know? So just kind of cover as much of the gauntlet as I can to kind of help out anyone that might be in need, might, you know, feel like they need to fine tune some things here or that it's just not connecting in, in certain areas to see what I can do to kind of get people a little bit better connected to what they're trying to do. Um, so education was was definitely my big, my big plan for 2020. Um, <clears throat> still is. Yeah. We just may have to modify that. Um, and, and some more competitions, because when you're a competitive person, man, do you love to compete? <laughs> yeah. yeah, so true. Oh, I love it. That's exciting. When I decided to do online workshops, it, truthfully, it was just for a local. I didn't know that it would ever be what it is today, where I teach, you know, internationally and then get to travel teaching it. Like I never, ever imagined it would be like that. And so again, just follow your, your gut on what you want to do and then get with the right people. Sometimes it really is our teenagers that can help teach us how to do this kind of stuff. The ones that are being honest. <laughs> yeah, I can't prove it, but mm. <laughs> Pretty sure. Yeah, yeah. I've had to reach out a lot. And then I've had to pay for some, you know, pretty spendy things to get to learn the techie side of it, because I wanted to learn it the best way that I could. So sometimes mm -hmm. I need somebody to walk me through something like that, just to have me read it or watch another video of how to do it. And then my screen doesn't look the same, because it's not updated the same version that theirs was. I instantly get anxiety. And so I'm like, Nope, I need somebody to walk me through this. And yeah, out there that you can do like that oh yeah you know where I've learned is that over 28 years of doing nails majority of my clients still wear the same shape which is a shorter nail squared with the side slightly smooth so not a scroll and you know I've always worked with the structure within that <laughs> length and stuff like that and I have a few clients that have longer nails so honestly where I feel like I need to pick up my pace right now is we're going to get ready to like do a lot of new sets. And I don't do new sets because my clientele has been the same clientele and I've done fill after fill after fill after fill. Well, this is the time that they get to choose like whatever length. What if I have a client that comes in that wants some sculpted something that I haven't done in a long time. So I realized that where I need to kind of like practice right now is the possibility of sweet talking some of the clients that I've wanted <laughs> to change their face. <laughs> For years oh, yeah. and um and start them off that way you know we can always change the shape later but you know start like fulfilling that part of the career that I've wanted to do which is I've done art for all these years I'm really wanting to master a lot more with the longer lengths and the shapes and the structures for that so every class that I've been watching and trying to watch with that has been shapes and structure because that's where I feel like I'm missing part of that and not that I can't do it I just don't do it on a daily basis. So I'm kind of excited for, for all these new sets. I haven't done new sets on occasion, like maybe a prom girl once a year or something like that. So I'm super excited to be able to, to restart with that. It'd be fun. Yeah. A lot of fun. Yeah. Oh my gosh. I missed a lot of things on here. Sorry. <laughs> Madison says, so Nicole needs to, Nicole needs to hold a class. I want to learn some of her cool arts. I'll bring the vodka, you know. For <laughs> <reason she said. laughs> 
And of course, right after that, Anita puts a sweet message that says, follow your passion. <laughs> you know, two kinds of people. <laughs> Kimberly says she was going to have one. It's postponed due to the COVID-19. Yes. And yeah. we will send you the link. Yep. Absolutely. I, I know that you mentioned that the other day that you're still going to do it. Just find it. Oh, yeah. Time. Oh, yeah. yeah. We, we, we adapt. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. You know, it's interesting. I had something going on every single month this entire year. Oh, and wow. Everything is cleared. I have not one thing on my book except for rebuilding my clientele. So I'm like, do I add more clients because I have a part-time clientele because I travel the rest of the time? Mm -hmm. Or do I go ahead for the rest of the year and build my clientele up? But then when I start traveling again, I'm going to have to like deplete that clientele again. So I'm kind of in the struggle, like where to go, because I know the money is going to be there and I know I can build it up quickly and I can, you know, get it out there. But am I going to be able to maintain it? So I want to set myself up for success from the beginning. So obviously I'm going to get my regulars in and kind of reassess from there. But have you thought about like changing up your hours or your pricing or kind of your structure of what you do? Um. I've not really given it too much consideration. I mean, I've, I've had the same hours for the past almost four years. Um, so I've really gotten used to, you know, my client's routine of, of their preferential hours and it just, it's worked really well for myself and my family. So I'm a, I'm kind of a big, don't rock the boat person. <laughs> so, and if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Yep. Um, I would love to, I, I don't think, um, I've not really considered any kind of pricing alternatives. We have considered some kind of um, more like, you know, welcome back kind of um, service add-ons, uh, just some mm. kind of little extra pamper things, because especially with the time of the year, everyone's, and with all the hand washing, everyone's skin is just so dry right now. And it's just, it, it'll be nice for everyone to have just a little extra TLC with their, mm -hmm. with their services. Yeah. Yeah. So very, very true. Um, I was talking to Anita earlier and she um, is a distributor and she has a whole bunch of lotion and she got contacted from, I think it was a hospital. So she was delivering these lotions because this hospital said, we want that good lotion that you have. Uh -huh. and, um, and so anyways, her little, what I will call side hustle, even though it's her everyday hustle has really come out there that people knew the quality of what she had to offer. What, one of the things that you said that I've been talking about a lot is not discounting, but offering more. Exactly. Yeah. And so like you said, doing an add on service, even if, it's, even if it's a brief service of like a pedicure, just paint their toes to match their nails, make them feel whole again. Exactly. And if it's, yeah, if you do natural nail care, maybe a little bit longer massage, mm -hmm. you know, really, really reconnect with them. The more that they come back to you and then feel like they're, they're just a number and they're not used to that, yeah. it's, it's going to be an instant disconnection. This is your time to actually shine on doing that. Yeah. And I always, I always tell people that are, that are not in the nail industry that kind of are curious as to, you know, why we build such strong relationships with our clients, people that, you know, something that people don't really realize is you see your nail technician more than you see any other service provider that you have. We are in our chair every two weeks. I mean, it's, it's like clockwork, if not more often than that. It is just, you know, we, we share your ups, we share your downs, you know, and we're, <laughs> we're huge cheerleaders for you. You know, it, it's so easy to build a really strong connection with someone. I, I don't even see my friends that much, you know? <laughs> I've said people are more dedicated to us than they are to church. <laughs> exactly. And I, I was talking to someone the other day. I said, you know, I said the thing that people, you know, cause we've had so many clients, we are so blessed with the clientele that we have. They just have the big sparks and they just care so much about us as we, as we do for them. But so many of them have reached out and it's just, it becomes so apparent that the majority of them, they don't just miss getting their nails done. They miss the experience of coming in and, and being with us. And that's, that's their time, you know, that's their little sanctuary away from their own storm. And that's what they miss the most is just the, the experience and the downtime. And it's just, the weight off their shoulders that they have while they're in salon. Oh, so it's so just true. something that you don't realize is such a big part of your life until it isn't. Yeah. 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 
as Kimberly said, it's adding that value to why they miss you. And exactly. you know, we've talked about this a lot that sometimes it's not the service. They can get the service that you provide anywhere. They really can. It might not be the exact same steps or the exact same product, but they choose it because of you. I know people always say the Amy time, and I'm sure that you've heard Nicole time. Like, I think we've all been experiencing that. Like, I, I need this. <laughs> yeah. So there was somebody saying the other day that they were going to put a thing out there to their clients. And I know it was a funny kind of thing, but honestly, there might be some truth to it. They said that for their nail clients that are needing the therapy session, that the therapy is now open, like the open sign. <laughs> And you can pay through Venmo or PayPal, however you prefer. And the therapy oh, session yeah. is now open. And it reminded me of like the old Charlie Brown kind yeah, of stuff. Yeah, Lucy, the doctor is in. Yeah. <laughs> I love that. I thought it was funny. That's you know, funny. one thing that I want to do, and I'm not tech savvy like this, but do you guys remember the picture that's out there? And it's like these cute little ballet girls. And there's like the doctor, the lawyer, the teacher, and the nail tech. And the nail tech's like upside down on the, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I kind of want to like revamp that a little bit and then, um, you know, put in, I don't know, something in there to make it funny and then make that, you know, with the times of what's going on and make it funny and put it back out there. <laughs> so fun. I swear to you, we have the fun. I think we get to be the most real. We don't have the limitations to our creativity that like a lot of jobs have. We have unlimited possibilities of whether you just want to do pre-made tips and sell it, or if you want to do natural nail, whatever, like our careers are so open, the possibilities that are out there that I think being a nail tech and being a nail tech in times like that it is now is one of, well, for me, it's the best career that's ever out there. So, oh yeah. Oh yeah. We, we've got a high ceiling. Yeah. A high ceiling. It's 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 hard to hit a point where you're just like, well, I can I can go no I can go no higher. Oh, give me a break. Yeah, not in this career. Yeah, That's amazing about what we do is just it's got such range to it. I I love everything about it. I cannot imagine yeesh, doing anything else. I'm sorry, I was trying to, and it was horrible. <laughs> <laughs> no do that again <laughs> oh I love it well Nicole I see that Sean has skipped out on us for the rest of this yeah <laughs> <laughs> and um I just want to think I think we've caught up on everything that's on here and oh Michelle says we're cheaper than a shrink you can feel good about yourself when you leave <laughs> Yes, ma'am. There's truth to that. And so, Nicole, <laughs> thank you so much for going live on your personal page and just sharing some happiness in this time. Thanks for coming on and being my special guest today as well. I, I, re I really appreciate it. I was so excited. <laughs> I know. I was too. I, absolutely. Yeah. So, you guys, thanks again so very much. Um, uh, continuously check the events section of our group is where we're um, hosting any Tech Talk Live, any pop-ups, look and learns, everything that, you know, that we're kind of doing or trying to put it all in the event section. So, if you click going, it will translate into your time zone and then send you a reminder, which is a nice feature that Facebook has. So, Anyways, thanks you guys for being supportive of everything. And you know, this is the tough time. We all know that we're all in this together as they say. And we just have to keep the mindset of knowing that, you know, we got to get through this and, and we have to lean on each other and reach out if you need to and know that you're not alone. And so um, don't look at it that way because you're not, okay? So yeah, or you can get on Tinder. Just kidding. Not. There's social distancing that goes on with that. <laughs> All right. Yeah, exactly. So I know, I think your cup is empty. Yeah. Nicole, cheers. And thank you so much for bringing a bright spot in not only our industry, but in our day. So thank you. Thank you. You're so welcome. Right. I appreciate it. All right. You guys have a great day. Have a great week. I love it. Love it.